Over the past few years, Georgia has been scrutinized for their starting quarterbacks, whether it being choosing Jake Fromm over Justin Fields or looking as bleak as it did through the first half of last season. Enter JT Daniels. When JT Daniels took over the starting quarterback role, the offense looked completely different, leaving many to wonder what if he started the whole season. But who is JT Daniels? In the Who Is series, we go through the backstories of up and coming collegiate and pro athletes. If there's a player you want to see in future videos, make sure to leave it in the comment section below. Jonathan Tyler Daniels was born on February 2nd, 2000 and grew up in Irvine, California. Daniels did everything early growing up, from walking early to talking early. His mother told The Athletic that he would climb out of his crib to play with his Thomas the Tank engines, take books off the shelf, along with other things, with his mother Allie finding the floor of his room covered. He always wanted to tinker with something as a kid, which he would then obsess over until he mastered it. When Daniels was four, his family moved to Southern California, where he would start playing flag football, then tackle football. JT played quarterback and usually handed the ball off, which was always a mess because teams would stack 10 players in the box. As a result, JT's coach decided they needed to start passing. Right away, JT showed signs of accuracy, a strong arm, and the mind needed to play quarterback. Daniels had and still has a strong relationship with his mother, with the Athletics saying he is a lot like her. But it was his father who took JT to camps, training sessions, and instructor-led events, always asking his son if he wanted to go, and JT always answering readily with a yes. JT wanted to be a football player. When JT was six, his father loved to play Madden, and JT wanted to be his coach. He would serve as his father's offensive coordinator, not letting his dad start until little JT was dressed the part. When JT was 12, he went to a camp where he was named one of the top performers along with Matt Corral and Trevor Lawrence. JT wanted to go to modern day high school with his family living nearby. The issue was, when JT graduated from middle school, he was smaller than most of his peers, so his family decided to homeschool him for a year after 8th grade, almost serving as a redshirt. The goal was to get JT bigger and stronger, and his mother was up to the task, making the right meals and right proportions, although JT was a picky eater. By the end of the year, JT was almost 180 pounds while also growing his mind reading books like The Biology of Belief and Mind Gym, An Athlete's Guide to Inner Excellence. I will link both those books in the description below if you're interested in checking them out. Daniels would enroll at California Powerhouse Modern Day High School in Santa Ann, California. He wasn't supposed to become the starter his freshman year, but when starter Matt McDonald would get hurt, Daniels was thrown into the game. Suddenly it was JT's team, and he would have a rough start, throwing a short screen his first play, but throwing an interception on his second play. Although he had a rough start, Daniels kept his composure putting the turnovers behind him and telling Bleacher Report, you know what, I made that pass a million times in practice. After that throw, it was a lot calmer with the help of guys like Tommy and Frank Martin. They all rallied around me. Daniels finished his freshman year throwing for 3,042 yards, 33 touchdowns, and 4 interceptions, averaging 250 passing yards per game, and leading modern day to the semifinals of the Pac-5 Division playoffs. Daniels would not give up the starting role the rest of his high school career. As a sophomore, Daniels would be given full control of the offensive play calling by the modern day coaching staff, something that wasn't given to former modern day and USC quarterback Matt Barkley until his senior year. Daniels responded by throwing for an Orange County record 4,849 yards, 67 touchdowns, and 6 interceptions, while completing 74.5% of his passes in one of the most talent-filled conferences in the country. Scholarship offers rained down, but rather than celebrating, he was focused on fixing his one blemish on his record and his mobility, telling himself, you're just slow as shit, according to The Ringer. That offseason, Daniels focused on becoming leaner and re-engineering his stride. Greg Biggins, a national recruiter for 24-7 Sports, said his athleticism went from a C- to an A. Daniels had randomly chosen the number 18 when he got to modern day, but that number would become special going into his junior year. His Pop Warner team hadn't won a championship in 18 years until Daniels ended the drought. Going into his junior year at modern day, they hadn't won a championship for 18 years either. Daniels proceeded to throw for 4,123 yards and 52 touchdowns while also rushing for 561 yards and 9 touchdowns on 63 carries, leading modern day to the state title game with a 14-0 record. Going into the title game, the pressure was on Daniels. Although they've had quarterbacks like Matt Leinard and Matt Barkley, modern day had never won a CIF state open division championship, let alone gone undefeated, according to Bulldog Nation. Modern Day took on Concord de La Salle in the game that took place at Sacramento State in 26 degree weather with 40 mile an hour winds, according to Bruce Rawlinson. Daniels proceeded to throw for 233 yards and 3 touchdowns completing 20 of his 30 passes along with 2 rushing touchdowns leading Modern Day to the win. 
Daniels was named Gatorade Player of the Year, becoming the first junior to win the award in over a decade. The concept of reclassifying was talked about as a joke after Daniels led the Monarchs to a win over Bishop Gorman, giving Bishop Gorman their first loss in nearly four years. Biggins joked with Daniels saying, Dude, JT, you should skip your senior year and go to USC right now. You could start for them next year. JT laughed it off at first and then asked if he could actually do that. After Daniels talked to academic personnel at USC and Modern Day, as well as USC compliance, he found out he could. Daniels would have to complete what his dad called a senior year in a semester, past 10 classes. Chemistry, History, Government, Economics, Algebra 2 Trigonometry, two English classes, and three religion courses, as well as the mandatory community service hours during the back half of his junior year. According to 24-7 Sports Composite, although he reclassified, Daniels was a five-star recruit who was the second best pro-style quarterback, second best player in California, and 16th best player in the class of 2018. He received over 18 different Division I offers from the likes of Alabama, LSU, Notre Dame, USC, and Wisconsin. His first Division I offer started coming in midway through October of his freshman year, receiving his first scholarship offer from Cal. Notre Dame, Arizona State, Washington, UCLA, and BYU soon followed his freshman year. During the spring of his freshman year, Daniels told Bleacher Report, Honestly, I don't put much thought into being recruited right now. My mindset at this point is all based off of the football season coming up this fall. I'm very appreciative and honored for all the offers and interest, but my focus is on what we can do to prepare for this season. Daniels would commit to his hometown USC Trojans before his junior year, choosing to stay close to home and replace Sam Darnold who had just left for the NFL. When JT Daniels first got to USC, he needed to compete against redshirt sophomore Matt Fink and redshirt freshman Jack Sears for the starting quarterback job. Going into camp, Fink was the only player who had in-game experience. JT won the battle and took over the starting spot. The season did not go as planned as USC went 5-7, their first losing season since 2000, and Daniels put up less than stellar numbers. Daniels finished the season throwing for 2,672 passing yards, 14 touchdowns and 10 interceptions, but only completing 59.5% of his passes. Going into his sophomore season, Daniels was in the quarterback battle once again. He competed against Fink and Sears again, along with freshman Keaton Slovis. Daniels won the job for a second year in a row and was excited to work in Graham Harrell's air raid offense. Daniels' season started and ended very quickly as he suffered a torn ACL during the season opener against Fresno State and was out the rest of the season. He finished the season throwing for 215 yards, one touchdown, and one interception while completing 73.5% of his passes. Slovis played extremely well, throwing for 3,502 yards, 30 touchdowns, and 9 interceptions, and led USC to an 8-5 record, going 7-2 in conference. After the season, JT Daniels decided to transfer, needing a fresh start entering the transfer portal on April 16th, but not shutting out the possibility of returning to USC. At the time, there was a projected quarterback battle between Slovis and Daniels before the college football world was rocked by COVID-19. Daniels would visit Georgia and met Todd Munkin, who was a lot like Graham Harrell. Along with that, Georgia was known for a strong run game, which usually means a strong offensive line, who could protect Daniels, who was coming off a serious knee injury. JT Daniels applied and received immediate eligibility from the NCAA before the start of the season. He was set to compete against fellow transfer Jamie Newman for the Bulldogs starting quarterback job. That was until Jamie Newman shocked everyone and decided to opt out of the 2020 season so he could focus on the NFL draft. The team doctors would not clear Daniels to play at first due to not having full mobility yet from his previous injury. Kirby Smart decided he'd rather be conservative with JT's injury rather than rushing him back and risking further damage. Along with that, Stenson Bennett was playing pretty well for the Bulldogs, but once Bennett struggled against Alabama, Kentucky, and Florida, along with the postponement of the Missouri game, Smart decided it was time for a change at quarterback and turned to Daniels, who was now fully healed. Daniels debuted for Georgia against Mississippi State and threw for 401 yards and four touchdowns, bringing excitement back for the Georgia football season. We will never know what may have happened if Daniels had started for the Bulldogs against Alabama and Florida, and Bulldogs fans can only look to the future. Daniels finished the season throwing for 1,231 yards, 10 touchdowns, and 2 interceptions, completing 67.2% of his passes and averaging 10.3 yards per attempt. Daniels led Georgia to four straight wins, including beating an undefeated Cincinnati in the Peach Bowl. Going into 2021, Daniels is viewed as a preseason Heisman favorite and a future first-round pick. If he could repeat half the success he had in four games he played in 2020, Georgia will be a dangerous team and could be contending for a spot in the college football playoffs come conference championship week. But what do you think? Will JT Daniels lead Georgia to the college football playoffs? Let me know in the comment section below. 
Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, check out my other videos in the Who Is series. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Let's get to 5K subscribers by the end of June. And as always, remember to embrace the grind.